Hey there, my name's Brad. I'm the Harley Davidson Wizard. Figured I'd bring you around for the oil change that we're doing on this on this 2012 Road Glide. So we're actually doing a service on it, so that's where um, the seat's off and the saddlebags are off. We've already gone through and checked all the fasteners and everything. So all we have left to do is lube the cables and do the oil change on it. But I see a lot of ripped and torn drain plug O-rings. I'll show you the way that I do it to prevent that from happening and just kind of give you a few little tips that I do. So here we go. Let's take a look at the parts that we have and the oil filter wrenches that we have. Let's get going. Here are going to be the parts that we're using. This vehicle has a black oil filter on it, so we're going to replace it with the same thing. This is our all Harley Davidson stuff. It's a 63731-99A. It's a black twin cam oil filter. This one uses a gasket kit because it has a stock derby cover and it comes with three little drain plug o-rings. You should pick up yourself some extra drain plug o-rings because you will you're definitely going to have a situation in the future where you tear an o-ring accidentally. They're super inexpensive. The part number is 11105. You might as well just have a few extra laying around. That way you aren't in a bind when you need one. The part number for this kit is 17369-06. And this customer wants to use the Harley Davidson Sin 3 oil. And this works in all of the holes of the motorcycle, the engine, crankcase, and transmission. Part number for her is 6260005. So since we're going to be changing all three oils on this motorcycle, we have six quarts, the filter, and the necessary gaskets. So you're also going to want to get yourself a good oil filter wrench. This is the normal one from Harley Davidson. You can buy it at any Harley Davidson parts counter. I change a lot of oil and I've gone through a couple of these and I always blow out the square for the 3 8 extension that fits in here. I've had this thing laying around for like a year now. Just been waiting to weld that up. But since then, I ordered this one off of eBay. I will see if Amazon has a listing for one and whatever I find I'll post down in the description. But it seems, even though it's aluminum, it's a little bit thicker here. A lot of times what happens is these are stamped out of a really thin piece of steel. And you know, if you're, if you're just changing the oil on your motorcycle, you probably won't run into this situation, but I'm doing you know hundreds of them a year. But the flats here, kind of where it fits onto the end of the oil filter, the rigidity there kind of loosens, and then I'll have a tendency to slip on, slip on the oil filter, and the square blows out of the back of it. But this one I've had for a while and it's been holding up really well. It's a little bit stronger through the where it fits on the flats, and a little bit str stronger through the square, which is nice. But sometimes you'll run into an oil filter where this will slip on it, this will slip on it, and somebody's really cranked it down in there. A lot of times what happens is when people super crank down the oil filter, I see where this steel, um, this little piece of raised steel has compressed the gasket from it being on so tight that this piece of steel is kind of gouged itself into the aluminum face of the oil filter housing and that makes it super difficult to get off. So what I do in those situations, I bought this little expander from Home Depot. It says Husky on it and it's for oil filters from two and a half inches to three and three quarter inches. And it works out really, really well. And it's super heavy duty. And this will, this has been able to take off any oil filter. Usually what happens is it gets in there so tight that it bends the oil filter in these three areas. So then it doesn't slip and it gives it a super good bite to come off. You have to be really careful about it because these ears are so thick that if you just get going all crazy on it, that this will bind up on the crankshaft position sensor. So if you do use this style, you got to be really careful about it. That's where this style already has a cutout for that crankshaft position sensor along with this style too. So you can get in there, turn it, pop it off, 
rotate, pop, you know, and do it like that. So those are the three types that I have. <coughs> like I said, lately I've been prefer preferring this style. And then in worst case scenario, this guy gets me through. So as far as the vehicle is concerned, right now we're in Michigan and it's currently snowing outside. But you want to change the oil. You want to get the oil good and hot. So it's always best to do it after you're riding the vehicle. You know, I have an ex extra oil change kit at the house or whatever. And then you just pull the bike in the garage and change the oil. But that's what I'm going to get going on. I already have it hooked up to the exhaust system. And we're going to get it started and warmed up. And I'll bring you back. So now that we've got the bike all warmed up, we're just going to pull the three drain plugs. This is a drain pan that I like to use. It's from Harley Davidson. It's nice and low profile and it will hold all of the fluids that come out of the bike. So the drain plugs are, they have two different ways that you can remove them. And it's 99% of the drain plugs. There's some earlier ones that are a larger size, but the outside of the drain plug is typically a 5 8 inch socket. And sometimes you can't get that 5 8 inch socket in like around some of the the accessories that fit on the bottom of the bikes and the other way to get into the drain plug and to remove it is to use a quarter inch allen bit so before I, before i go and start pulling the drain plugs i just get both of those tools ready and we're going to pull the three drain plugs for the engine transmission and primary and also the oil filter and then we're going to remove the dipsticks to help the oil drain as fast as possible and this is probably the most important step to keeping the o-rings from tearing is to let all of the oil drain give it a good amount of time so that there is no longer like any actual oil dripping you want to get all of the oil out of there and that's what we're going to do So the rest of our oil is draining. It's just dripping out right now. Let's take a look at our drain plugs and see the condition that they're in. Obviously you want to look at the end of the magnet and make sure there isn't any type of like big metal poop on there. But this one, the o-ring's in good shape. And by good shape I mean just that it wasn't torn because we're going to be talking about torn drain plug o-rings. That other one is also good. This last one you can tell that the o-ring had gotten caught and torn and that's kind of what we're talking about today so now that we have the drain plugs out of the motorcycle the next thing to do is to take the old drain plug o-rings off I just use this little handy dandy pick deal take them off and this is the this is a important step as far as keeping the drain plug o-rings from getting torn because what happens is oil because when you remove it oil gets on the threads and then it builds up a little bit right behind the o-ring where the o-ring sits and as you tighten it down the oil pushes the o-ring out and that's what gets the o-ring torn 99 percent of the time so what i do i take these over to the wire wheel and then I clean all of the old pipe dope that's off of them. And then I use our multi-purpose solvent. It's a alcohol-based cleaner. And get all the oil and junk all off of these. And then I'll put the new O-rings on. And a little bit of new pipe dope. And I'll show you how I do that. So let's get that going. Alright, we're over at the wire wheel. I use a long quarter-inch Allen bit to fit into the end of the drain plug just like this so when I'm using it I don't get my hands caught in the wire wheel in there and 
And then we want to get down in the threads and really make sure that we clean everything out. And then now is a good time to clean the magnet off. So it looks just like that, nice and fresh. Alright, now that all the drain plugs are looking good, here we are. We're just going to toss some fresh oil in the oil filter while we're waiting. Alright, that's good. We're going to rip open our package. Get our new drain plug O-rings. We're going to put them on our drain plugs, just like that. Make sure they're all the way down in the groove. This is the type of pipe dope that we use. It's from Worth. You don't want to use a lot, you just want to put a little bit. I like to put it right at the very top couple threads and push it in deep into the threads so that you don't have a lot of extra pipe sealant. That's going to try to work its way down the threads and behind the o-ring as you push it in or thread it in. So just like that. I'm going to do it with all three. This type of pipe dope doesn't dry. Like, it will still stay very, uh, very liquidy like this, even by the time that we go back and do the next uh, oil change. So we don't have to worry about it like drying up or anything as the rest of the oil is draining out of the motorcycle. You want to have enough pipe dope on it so that it fills a couple of the threads but not so much that it it's going to be schmooing out everywhere basically. So now our drain plugs are ready to go. Our oil filter is getting primed up. Move your filter o-ring up just a little bit all right now I'm going to put the oil filter on the motorcycle it's kind of in a shadowy area but you just spin it on like any other oil filter put it on hand tight make sure the o-ring came off with your old oil filter and clean up the little gasket surface on the filter housing just to make sure everything's nice and clean and let's get going so now that we've given it plenty of time for the oil to be dripping out of the out of the cavities I like to take a little bit of cleaner spray it on a rag and get up in that hole because there's a little bit of a taper where the o-ring fits you want to make sure that taper is clean and free of oil and debris and then you get your o-ring that's ready to go or your drain plug that's ready to go and then get it up in there nice and quickly you don't want to be farting around with it and let oil get down on the o-ring and get caught up behind it and then run it in hand tight usually at this moment you can feel if you're going to be having a problem because you'll be tightening it down and then you'll feel the o-ring cut and split and then it'll It'll be tight and then get loose and tight. But everything's feeling good there. So we're going to torque it down. And the torque spec is 14 to 21 foot pounds. So we'll get a socket. Mm -hmm. 
All right. And if you saw it, it took the torque. And like I was saying, when you tear the O-ring, you'll feel it tighten up and then loosen. And that's the O-ring getting caught and bound up and then tearing. And then and then you're then you're torquing it down. So if you feel it rip, you might as well just stop, pull the O-ring back out, and then do it all over again. Clean up the drain plug, put a new O-ring on it, pipe dope it, clean up the hole that it's going to be going in, and then just doing it over because the last thing you want to do is have a, a drain plug that's leaking. You know, you put 40 or $50 worth of fresh oil on top of it, and then you got to pull it back out because it's leaking. All for just a very cheap o-ring so let's do the next one that was the primary same thing clean the rag jam the rag up in there clean out that taper you want to do it quickly you don't want any oil to be backing up jam your drain plug in there again quickly but you don't want to like cross thread it or do anything crazy. All right, we're coming up on the O-ring. Again, it's taking a good firm torque, which is normal. Now let's get our torque wrench out. All right. 14 to 21 foot pounds, that's 15.8, so that's perf perfect. Just to show you again, so that o ring and that drain plug is good and tight without a ripped o ring. And now for our last one, it's the transmission drain plug. That's where I use this little bit and this little, this quarter inch drive bit because it makes it easier to stick up in there and get twisting so same thing we're gonna put a little bit of cleaner on a rag get up into that the taper where the transmission fits or the where the o-ring fits in the transmission make sure we don't have any extra running out get it up in there and quickly but you know I'm not doing anything stupid just just quickly all right run it into the taper everything feels good and then same thing 16 foot pounds so she's good and tight and not torn. So all of our drain plugs are in. We're just gonna come back through here, lower the bike down. I put it up on this flat jack because it makes it easier for me to get my big torque wrench in there. So we're gonna lower the bike down and then I'm just gonna spray the bottom off here with uh, our alcohol-based cleaner. That way I'll get any oil residue off and then we'll fill it up with oil. Make sure that you fill the bike up with oil to whatever the recommendation is for your model but let's get going on that We're almost done so here we are we've already filled it up with oil if you can tell everything is free and dry We've cleaned up any residual oil that was hanging out, so everything's all good. So the last thing that we're going to do is get the bike off the hoist, get it fully warmed up, operating temperature, and check the oil. But that's all there is to it. Hopefully that helps some people out that have problems with uh, tearing the o-ring as far as the drain plug, but that's how it goes. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. Thanks.